live. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Facebook Live with Dr. Jill and Dr. David Roberts. I'm so excited to have him on today and to um, grill him on all uh, things related to sulforaphanes. And if you haven't heard of this uh, pretty profoundly amazing molecule, we're going to talk about it and tell you why it might benefit your health. Um, just a little background, of course, you can find um, all of, of the past videos either here on Facebook or on my YouTube channel, which you can find by just searching my name. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, I highly recommend it. We've got uh, two or three new interviews every week. It's all free content and just great, great informational stuff. I know I learn every time. Um, so I want to introduce our guest. Now, we have not met before, but um, I have heard just amazing things about um, him and his company. And so I'm super excited to bring him to you today. Um, David Roberts is the founder of Broccoli, and he's a master's degree in public health from John Hopkins School of Public Health with a focus on epidemiology and international health. He also has a master's degree in biomedical engineering from the University of Virginia. And that's very cool, David, because I have a bioengineering degree from the University of Illinois. So okay. <laughs> Yeah, we have a little bit in common. Um, it's funny because I always thought, you know, I'm not really a bioengineer. I, I love medicine and love that, but it's complex problem solving, isn't it? And I think yes. that there is like a, even though I don't think of myself as the bioengineer, there's a piece of it. He has a bachelor's degree in electrical and biomedical engineering from Duke, and he has more than 20 years of experience working on quantitative research and public health across three continents, serving as founder and member of a New Dominion Philanthropy. Philanthropy Metrics, American Pain Research, Restore, and now Broccoli. And like I said, I have heard just the most amazing things about you, your expertise, and just delighted to have you here. Um, so tell us a little bit. I love starting with story because story really gets us, gets our brain into remembering the content. Tell me, how did you get interested, interested in sulforaphanes and this research? And even maybe a little before then, what led you to it? Yeah, so... Um... It started, at, my wife was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer in 2012, and, um, and so she was very uh, keen on treating it uh, mostly naturally. Mm -hmm. um, with my background in sciences, uh, I, um, I actually, uh, you know, one of our promises to each other was that we would, um, you know, it, just doing something alternatively or in integratively doesn't mean it has to be crazy. And so it had, to, it had to be based in science. Um, and actually, um, my colleagues uh, will give me a hard time. Uh, I actually don't have a, a doctorate, so I'm not a doctor. You introduced me as a doctor, but um, so I have to just clear that up or else I'll, I never never hear the end of it. Um, <laughs> I'm but, sorry about uh, that, but you're, you're brilliant nonetheless. So, <laughs> we don't. Um, so yeah, we, we basically, um, uh, it was through her cancer journey, um, we ended up um, deciding to do more of a personalized medicine approach uh, where we grew um, her, we got some of her cancer cells and wow. grew them in uh, our lab um, with the help, uh, basically, one of my colleagues and the gentleman who stabilized this uh, sulfur and to put into broccoli is uh, John Gilday. And he, um, I met him the first week that Mara was diagnosed wow. and we've been uh, fast friends ever since. But he, um, we had a, a incubator, grew them, uh, grew her cancer cells in our lab. And then he was able to um, put 60 different supplements on them to see what uh, directly killed her type of cancer. And so um, sulforaphane ended up being number three. Wow. And, and so I went, out, went to buy it, went out to buy it um, and actually bought, I, I went and saw that I found a, co a compound or broccoli supplement that had uh, sulforaphane glucosinolate in it. I was like, oh, sulforaphane. And bought actually quite a bit of it. Um, and she was taking it for a while. It didn't really seem like it was doing anything. Come to find out uh, the sulforaphane glucosinolate is actually the precursor chemical to sulforaphane. And actually, um, so it really wasn't doing what we thought it was doing. So we ended up shifting to growing broccoli sprouts. Uh, we had uh, probably enough broccoli sprout growing material for 10 families. 
we grow them and juice them every day um, with uh, we had this kind of a and if you've ever had them it's really pungent um, and it tastes bad so anyway we made a good tasting juice and, it, and um, did that for a while well I had, I think I'd asked John I was like hey can you stabilize or can you come up with a stable form of this so we can put it in the supplement um, so we don't have to grow all these sprouts and um, and a year, couple years went by and then he was just like hey I think I did it wow. and I'm like I think I'd even forgotten that I had asked him. And so uh, we sent it off out to, um, to get tested. Uh, sure enough, there was a stable form of, of sulforaphane. And at the time, um, my wife was like, we have to get this out. You know, this is like a game changer to have this because we had at the time a, um, that she was diagnosed a, uh, one and three year old and they grew up with a sprouting and but it's a lot because you know you can have it smells really bad it tastes really bad um and then you know if you grow a crop you can get fruit flies or mold and it goes bad and you lose a crop and so anyway it's just a having an option um was just uh, easy and so um so unfortunately my wife died um in september 2017 and um, she had made a move to raise some seed money that came in uh, about a week later. And so at that point, um, you know, we um, formed the company and, and ended up getting the a supplement in a capsule to market in um, April of 2018. And that's, um, you know, it's important um, because it does, it does a lot of things and, and I would say it's easier to not get a chronic disease. I'm sure you tell your patients this than to get it and try to fix it. And so sulforaphane is great at um, really keeping, you know, keeping things at bay. So that's a little bit of the backstory, um, how broccoli, and it sounds like I'm saying broccoli, but it's Brock Elite is the name of the supplement. Um, that's, you know, what, how, how it came to be. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that personal information. And gosh, I'm sorry for your loss, but I just had this real sense as you were speaking, your wife must be so proud of you and what you're doing and, and, and bringing this. And I don't know if you know, but I at 25 had a very aggressive breast cancer. So my heart really, really goes out to you and what you're doing because I've lived that and I happened to survive and yet I know I was in a group of young women under 40 I was 25 at the time and of course as you know it's so aggressive in younger women and I am the only one of that young woman group that's still living so I know the statistics like I'm a miracle and I didn't know this before we talked of how much in common with that passion for I mean there's so many other uses we'll talk about today but that's one reason I wanted to bring you on is I only bring on things that I love and use and believe in myself. I'm not a salesperson, but this is something I can get so behind because I've lived it. And we'll talk about glyphosate in a minute. I grew up on a farm, so I had massive exposure to Roundup and glyphosate, and I know it affected my body and my microbiome. And I've been searching every since, and I talk to patients. It's a big passion and project of mine as well. What else can we do? So let's talk a little bit with your background about your perspective on glyphosate and um, I know a little bit about what it does to the microbiome. I'd love to hear your perspective. And then what can sulforaphane do for that? Yeah, um, well, that's, it's a very important question. It's a very timely question. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And um, so there's a lot to say. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, before broccoli, uh, the, uh, I helped start another supplement company called Restore. Um, yeah. and I didn't realize that David, that's my other favorite thing. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that was a game changer in my gut health. Like my permeability issues that had been for years and years and years, I had Crohn's disease. I had celiac and both were undiagnosed till after the cancer restore changed my gut. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so through restore, um, we did a lot of research on glyphosate and looking at its shift in micro, micro, your microbiome, but also, and um, glyphosate is um, just, um, it does a lot in shifting your um, gut permeability, so tight yes. junction function. Um, and that's, that, that, you know, 
if you if you have leaky gut or intestinal permeability, you know you can get near term. You can get things like um, um, allergies or sensitivities. And and as your immune system's always on, then you can, can get you know more of a um, um, just a stronger allergy and then autoimmune. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so having your gut closed is important. So tight junctions, um, the research we've done at Broccoli to kind of build on that has been, and this is, um, with Dr. with John Gilday, um, who also, uh, it was the person who determined, um, so yeah, I basically gave him a bottle at the time it wasn't restore. And, uh, I was like, given my, um, commitment with my wife, Mara, um, we had to figure out what it did. This is uh, with Dr. Oops. And so we, uh, I gave it to him and he was able to figure out that it was a gut supplement. And, um, and wow. so with, uh, John, uh, with John, we basically wanted to see what is, what does glyphosate do with, um, NRF2? So give a little bit of background of what NRF2 is. And then also, how does it, um, and how, what does it do with the cellular communication networks? So gap junctions. So gap junctions, um, every cell is connected um, through a series of gap junctions, which uh, allow communication from cell to cell. So cells uh, aren't just individuals, they're functionally coupled. And it's how, um, it's how wounds heal, it's, it's all sorts of things. And it's also when cells stop talking to one another, that's how disease occurs, specifically cancer. And so, um, so basically, uh, with I'll start with the gap junctions since we're talking about it. So with gap junctions, uh, your we showed that glyphosate decreases that communication, cell to cell communication, thirty percent. Wow. Um, and so that's uh, that's a lot. <laughs> and. Uh, that decrease in cellular communication, actually there are a couple papers um, that we can point to, but that show specifically lost gap junction, gap junction communication can cause cancer. Um, so that's, that's a, an, a big issue. Mm -hmm. um, and so we looked at, okay, well, what if you put, and this is the amount, it's about a hundred parts per million, I believe, of glyphosate and maybe less. It's been a year since we did the study, but but um, it's it's something you can get from a meal of like a large serving of soybeans or mm -hmm. things that have um, maybe even a fast food meal. And mm -hmm. so that communication, um, if you take sulfur or sulfurafen specifically, our form, which is Brock Elite, um, that actually gets leveled out, and so. Uh, you're back to baseline. Now, if you don't take glyphosate and you take um, broccoli, it, it actually improves the cellular communication a lot. Wow. Um, I can't remember the exact number. I think it, it's um, about 50% improved. Wow. So let me try to restate what you're saying really quick, make sure our listeners understand that I'm getting what you're saying because it's profound. First of all, um, you're saying a typical meal with glyphosate. So for people who are listening, most of you know Roundup and glyphosate. I've talked about it for years, but just to be clear, um, genetically modified corn, soy, cottonseed, and certain other crops that are real common in the U.S. and the majority, unless it's certified organic, are going to have Roundup residue on them because they're sprayed before they're harvested with this um, weed killer, and the genetically modified organisms are made to resist that, so they don't die. Um, but by nature, then, a lot of our food supply, especially corn and soy, which are pretty much in any processed food that you buy, corn syrup and soy lecithin and other things, and they're almost always genetically modified and less noted or less organic. So unless you're deliberate about 100% organic diet, you're probably getting exposure to glyphosate. And the latest studies have shown that even organic California wines have residues. So this is everywhere. So we're all getting exposure. And what you're saying is that glyphosate decreases cell to cell communication by like 30%. But if you have broccoli, before the exposure. So say you're regularly taking it in the morning with your pills and then your evening you had a meal, you would actually decrease that effect of glyphosate on the cells. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Amazing. And then if you don't have glyphosate, which is even better, because I like for me, I try to avoid it. Um, you're going to have an increase in cellular communication. Yes. 
Exactly. Yeah, and people ask, you know, um, given this my story, what if there's one just one food you can avoid uh, to because you're worried about cancer? If I'm worried about cancer, what food should I avoid? And so, without hesitation, I'll say high fructose corn syrup, yes. um, and and because it's in so much um, mm -hmm. and it's what it does to your metabolism. But then I'll throw in. Uh, I'll really make it, you know, two because I'll throw in really quick and soybean oil, which is also in a lot of things, including, um, you know, people think that if they're eating a salad, it's good for them. Well, if you are eating a salad with, uh, uh, with just conventional uh, um, dressing, it, al it always has uh, a soybean oil in it or vegetable oil. And so that's bad. Oh, so I want to comment really quick, if you're, you're okay, because this is, I, so I eat a completely soy-free diet and corn-free diet partially for this reason, but I want to tell you what you're saying, David, is so real, because I have like one brand of salad dressing, I'm going to name it because you're probably wondering, Organic Girl is completely soy-free, but there's others, I have no affiliation with them, but it is actually incredibly hard to find soy-free salad dressing and soy-free chocolate, so if you're a chocolate person, chocolate lover, there are a few brands out there that are gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, non-GMO, organic, fair trade, etc. But it's hard to find and you have to be a very good label reader to find these things. And then here's the other thing. If you're cooking at home, you can avoid it because you can use olive yeah. oil, good oils. I have no trouble because I mostly 99% eat at home. However, if you're eating out, you can almost guarantee you're getting exposure to these things. So that's where there is a difference And people are like, well, I eat really healthy, but I'm eating out five meals a week. You're going to get exposure there as well. Yes. And so um, you know, a trick I'll do is if I eat a salad out, I'll just say, hey, do you have uh, olive oil and vinegar? Yeah. And I'll just and if they're not sure if it's olive oil, then it's not. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You gotta. Um, and you know, it. some people have celiac. That's a hard thing to deal with. You avoid gluten. You know, from rye, wheat, barley. I think it's actually much harder if you have a soy or corn allergy. There's so many more foods that have those two food groups in them. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, so. Communication is important. Um, we, the other study we looked at was something called NRF2. So, in, in, uh, so that's um, basically it's a protein and it's in our cells and it's responsible. Um, so it basically when you take sulfurifen, it can go into the nucleus and then uh, begin um, turning on a lot of different things. So what it does is it it actually turns on something called the antioxidant response system, which is responsible for about 200 anti antioxidants. So people think of vitamin C as an antioxidant, it's probably the most popular. That's one molecule and one um, vitamin C molecule can take out one prooxidant. Well, with sulforaphane, it actually generates for 72 hours, wow. um, this antioxidant, uh, 200 different ones to, to begin helping um, you know, take care of those peroxidants. So antioxidant response system, it turns, uh, it helps with uh, inflammation. Um, it turns uh, on, um, uh, what else? The detox, it's, it's the best, uh, basically, um, NRF2 is responsible for phase two detoxification. Um, and so, you know, the, there, there's a, a lot of things that, that, that are going on there. Um, and so, you know, NRF2 is the, one of those systems that, that if you don't have it, um, you'll pretty quickly get sick and probably die. And so that's how important it is. And so, um, so what we did was we looked at, again, what happens to NRF2 um, if you have, you know, this, this amount of uh, glyphosate that you can get in a meal. And what happens to NRF2 if you have amount of sulforaphane that you can get from our, a dose, so 10 milligram dose of broccoli. And so uh, we should, um, again, we're, it's 30% um, decrease in NRF2, which that may not sound like, it's like, ah, that's not that much, but that's, that's a huge amount. And that's because, you know, we think about, especially with detox, we think, um, you know, your liver is responsible for detoxification. Well, yeah, it, it does a, quite a bit of detox, but every cell in your body does detox. Mm -hmm. And glyphosate, that amount of glyphosate 
basically drops your it, it retards your every cell in your body's ability to detox. So it's kind of the mother of all toxins mm -hmm. because it makes every toxin that much more toxic because you can't get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, and so anyway, those are some of the, and so basically with a broccoli, again, it brings it back to baseline. Um, and then uh, if you don't, aren't exposed to um, glyphosate, it actually improves it uh, around, around 30 to 40%. Uh, mm -hmm increase in interrupt to activation uh, and so so yeah those are some some of the um things that glyphosate does and we're excited that um because everyone's exposed because it's everywhere we're excited to have another tool in the tool belt to be, be able to help yeah so a little story about that so five years ago and i had actually had a mold exposure so i was kind of toxic from that but i was like i'm 100 percent organic my diet's super clean i'm going to check my glyphosate levels and i'm assuming they'll be zero i was um shocked when i got the results because i was at that time 2015 um, they had a comparison this was an older lab that was just doing it for public awareness so it's no longer available but on that particular test they compared it to some studies of glyphosate around the world and one of them was a comparison of farmers on application day after glyphosate exposure so it was a pretty high level that day they measured them i was triple the amount in my year uh, of farmers on application day. And I'm like uh, organic, I'm like the organic Nazi. <laughs> like I'm really, really, um, you know, yeah. careful about it. And so I had to really think, okay, here I am trying to do my best avoiding all kinds of non-organic foods and all corn and soy. Um, now I have two dogs and I have a, a condo, which so I don't take care of the landscaping. And I'm pretty sure that my dog's walking in the sprayed, you know, and then they sleep with me. I think that was my exposure. Um, and then shoes, of course, I don't wear my shoes inside. There's all these little things so I changed and since then I've come up with zero measurements since that time of knowing but it was profound to me because even if your diet's really clean and you have dogs that walk on public grass that's been sprayed and of course it'll kill the grass but around the trees where the dogs like to pee they'll spray around the trees and it'll be you know brown and bare right there and if they they walk on that and they sleep with you. I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that was my exposure. And I was really shocked that someone who's so careful could have that high levels. So yeah. again, and it could have been from some past because I grew up on the farm as well. So this is a big deal to all of you. Even if you think you're eating super organic, you're probably getting some exposure. Now I want to talk about the, the reason why I brought you on is because I have used sulforaphanes in my practice for a long time. I will tell you, I, as far as just plain old sulforaphanes, it's just like your experience with your wife. I was kind of like, ah, they're supposed to be good, but I don't see a dramatic shift every time I use them. So to me, what your patented process is a big deal. And I, I had heard there's one other place in France that has a stabilized sulforaphane, but what makes yours different? Let's talk about why the stabilized form is really a big deal, because I, I think this is a game changer. Yeah, so prostaphane is the one in France. They're really good. There's nothing to really knock about them. It's, they're two different processes. Got it. They, they uh, do a chemical extraction, so a solvent, a chemical solvent extraction. Um, we don't. We do a water uh, extraction. Okay. So, um, so that's one difference. Um, and then ours actually... We talk about sulforaphane because it's the it, it's hard enough to get people to understand what that is. Right. There are also there's a whole potpourri of cousin chemicals in uh, the various, um, well, it, yeah, and and broccoli, but all the in the cruciferous family. Uh -huh. So, um, excuse me, I'm my nemesis is a fruit fly and it keeps. <laughs> <laughs> really. Yeah. Um, so. Anyway, the, the uh, sulforaphane is in broccoli and it's, and the reason we hear about broccoli and sulforaphane is because it's the highest and it's the most well studied. Okay. And it's probably one of the most potent, um, if not the most potent um, of the, this family called isothiocyanates. Uh -huh. And so, uh, but in broccoli, there are, are, are also, um, or in, in our broccoli capsule, the supplement, there are five other, um, isothiocyanates and they all work in synergy um, so actually there is a synergistic effect we also add um, we extract um, a, nut, a cousin chemical called phenethyl uh, isothiocyanate peitc is how most people in the science hear about it but that's from watercress and there's a so we did that because there's a study um, that shows and we've shown this ourselves uh, internally but there's a study published in the peer review 
that shows that sulfurfen plus PITC has um, a true synergistic effect. So one plus one equals, mm -hmm. you know, three to five. <laughs> yeah, and so it's a three to five effect. For and and the mechanism, I don't know exactly the mechanism, um, but it basically does all these things we talked about more. Um, and so that's a, you know, that's something that's a little different than prostaphane, but it's also, it's, if you're in the U.S., <laughs> you can actually get our product without having to import and you can go onto um, our website and get by it. Um, so it's, it's much more accessible. Um, but, but yeah, that, that's um, the other product. It is also stable. Okay. Oh, this is amazing because that watercress, I didn't know. And again, I knew there was something special. I know I'm going to be recommending broccoli versus the regular sulforaphanes from now on. Um, and the shelf stability is a big deal, like you said. So this had to be quite a complicated process. Um, and uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So, so, um, I, I, uh, I, <laughs> so the, um, every supplement that's a broccoli supplement on the market. Yeah. Um, has the precursor chemical, and so it's actually okay. not even sulforaphane. It's called okay. sulforaphane glucosinolate, but the glucosinolate is the precursor. And so what happens is you have a head of broccoli, mm -hmm. and um, you start chewing it. Well, that precursor chemical, which is called glucorathenin, um, and it's stable. Mm -hmm. That's why people. Uh, that's why that's the other brands. <laughs> the other brands because it, it's stable and uh, naturally, and so you chew it. You break the cell wall of the um, head of broccoli the, and, and through chewing, and it releases an enzyme called morosinase. Mm -hmm. That enzyme um, converts the glucoraphanin into the good chemical sulforaphane. You swallow it, and the amount of sulforaphane mm -hmm. that you internalize gives you the benefit. If you try to store that sulforaphane, um, historically it degrades, and that's why it hasn't been on the market. And that's why, the, again, 100% uh, of the um, broccoli supplements on the market are these precursor chemicals. I've had um, physicians at conferences um, adamantly tell me that they have sulforaphane and in the I'm like, and 100 of the time I'm like, well, let's look it up. You know, so we'll just go right there, and and inevitably it'll be sulforaphane glucosinolate, and I'll explain to them that that's glucoraphane, and I mean they're shocked. Um, and I had one lady even start crying. She was so upset that because she's thinking she's giving her pay and she knows what what it means it means that basically um you can so basically with glucoraphanin you swallow it um on average you get 10 to 20 percent gets converted into sulforaphane um it but it, you have to have the right gut bacteria so we have a hypothesis, uh, actually, John, Dr. Gilday, John Gilday, uh, has a hypothesis that the people who need it the most actually don't have the right gut bacteria to convert. So it's possible not to actually get any benefit wow. from taking a glucoraphane and supplement. Wow. Now, um, there is the, the, a lot of these companies will put the morosinous enzyme with the glucoraphane. Um, again, it's an enzyme it's a basically a protein and mm -hmm. likely um, it doesn't survive the, your stomach acid um, because that's what protein proteins are digested. <laughs> and so um, your stomach acid is designed to do that. Um, and so anyway, I think it's more of a marketing ploy mm -hmm. than uh, so. Um, and with the actual glute, uh, sulfurifin, if you take a, you know, sulfurifin, um, capsule mm -hmm. uh it's been shown 70 percent gets in wow. and, so, and and the percentage is important um but really what's most important is what's getting to the cell and does it have a biological effect and so people who take broccoli um typically feel the difference and that's really I and mean, that's it's so it's super easy to solve because they're like oh my goodness you know and we, we actually have uh, we've had a number of testimonies where people have actually stopped it because like, it's not doing anything. And then after they stop it, they're like, holy smokes, it was doing something, you know? And yeah. so, um, so yeah, most, um, most of our testimonies, you know, uh, aren't about de detox. People typically don't walk around and say, Hey, I feel less toxic. But what they do say is, um, 
you know, my joint was hurting and now it's not hurting. Mm -hmm. And so um, we did a study internally looking at, well, how quickly does, if you take a dose of broccoli, does it actually work? Because it seems like it's working pretty fast. And so um, we did a, a three day study. We did um, uh, looked at IL-6, interleukin-6, yeah. which, is, um, which is upstream from, from uh, NF-kappa B which is the molecule, it's the holy grail for inflammatory research yeah. with pharmaceuticals. COVID, it's all about IL-6, so this is very relevant. <laughs> yes, um, so IL-6 um, in urine, so we did a baseline on day one, uh, we did a, a blinded placebo day two, and then uh, bro uh, just one dose of the sulfurifin broccoli, sulfurifin day three, and so we looked at IL-6 and within 24 hours um, of taking the taking the um, the broccoli the sulfurifin, IL-6 dropped 20 or 30 percent. Wow! So 30 percent decrease in IL-6 in 24 hours. So that's enough mm -hmm. to so you can actually feel it. Um, yeah. That's that's a substantial decrease. And so most of our testimonials are from people um, who say, "Hey, um, I, my my joints were." you know, hurting and not, now they're not. We had a, a, a lady email us and say, hey, you know, I haven't been able to use my kitchen knives for years because my, my hands, my, you know, hurt so much and now I can. And I can, I'm just really, you know, blessed because I can make food for my kids now. Wow. Um, stuff like that. Um, and so I actually um, play guitar some, not a good guitarist, but it's more recreational and, mm -hmm. and, um, and I put it down for about six months, picked it back up, and I couldn't actually, this was before broccoli, couldn't, um, couldn't play more than a, a couple minutes because of my hands. And then once we, um, once we had, you know, released the broccoli, it was taking it more, and I realized, okay, you know, oh. this, this is actually, yeah, I, I'm able to do it. And so, so yeah, that, that's, those are the, by far the most, most, uh, Noticeable differences are in the, the pain levels from uh, from. Got joint. it. This is great. I love hearing about IL six because I actually measure cytokines in a lot of patients. That's a big player for inflammation, so this makes a lot of sense. Now I'll frame it kind of the types of patients that I typically use. So. Uh, hormonal issues, hormonal detox is a big deal with phase two. And so a lot of patients with excessive bleeding or uh, PMS or excessive estrogen dominance, fibroids, I'll use um, DIM, I'll use sulforaphanes, and I'll use calcium deglucurate. Um, and I want to talk about the differences between those and then sulforaphanes. But I also want to say cancer, like we started out talking about, this is always one of my arsenals uh, for cancer because it's so profound. And I'm assuming it's the glucuronidation pathway, which is phase two of the liver. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so, um, is what, so say, I'm sorry, can you say that? Oh, sure. Yeah, the glucuronidation, that's the pathway that, I think it's a glucuronidation, that, that pathway in the liver that's part of phase two that this can affect as well. If so, yes. Okay, got it. Yeah. So, so basically, just a review for you guys who are listening. A phase, there's phase. You have these toxic chemicals and even hormones and medications can be in that category, glyphosate, etc. And your liver is where we process that. And if everything's working, we can handle a load of chemicals and be just fine. So those chemicals come in phase one, and they go to this intermediate. The intermediate is almost more, almost uh, often more complex and toxic than the first thing that came in that process. So if you get stuck there and your phase two is really sluggish, you can actually become more sick, more toxic, more prone to cancer or disease um, because your phase two is slow. So the reason we're coming back to what's the deal with phase two, why would we use something like broccoli is because um, having that phase two run smoothly is incredibly important because if you're pushing phase one, drinking a lot of coffee, which increases cytochromes, and your phase two sucks, um, you're going to get stuck and you're going to get more sick instead of better. So anything we can do to really support phase two is critical to overall health, to autoimmunity, to gut, to cancer. And this product, the sulforaphanes is stabilized, um, works on that level. Yes. Yeah. Um, the uh, I, li I like to talk about detox and the detoxification and toxicity mainly because and sulforaphane because it works in all I mean um, in all three phases if you think of the third phase is the binding and excretion um, but 
it's the best natural chemical at phase two detoxification. Uh, okay. And then it actually uh, works in phase one by slowing it down, which is helpful um, if you think about it. Uh, so so you, it, what you were describing, I, I've heard called the detox flu. Basically, you have, you, know, you feel like you have, you're sick because of the, the various toxins that you from phase one that have built up and you can't get rid of them. Um, and so, you know, every, it seems like everyone and their brother have a, a detox formula and some of them may work fine, but the issue is they're not researched. And so, um, so sulforaphane, actually there's a whole body of research showing what it does in the detoxification. And so that's where having it, you know, we don't have to do the research on that. It's already been done. Yeah. Just say, hey, we have sulforaphane and it does detox. And you have the only stabilized in the U.S. form. This is so exciting to me. And what you're saying makes so much sense because, again, that phase one upregulated, phase two downregulated, if it makes sense what you what I just explained for those of you listening, that's the reason why it's an issue because you get stuck in the middle and the middle is more toxic than the first thing that came through. So it's a really bad place to be. Um, and like you said, David, there is not a lot of things. There's maybe no other things that I know of that um, downregulate phase one while upregulating phase two. There's a ton ton of stuff that upregulates phase one, like coffee, <laughs> which we all love. And there's all, all kinds of other things. That's the cytochrome pathway. So it's very easy to push phase one. That's not hard to do at all. The hard part is to slow that down so that phase two can keep up with it and that you can go all the way through. And then you mentioned phase three, which I love to talk about because that's all the gut. That's why this has such a profound effect on glyphosate and the microbiome because um, phase three is where we eliminate the toxins through the bile acids in the stool. And it sounds like broccoli affects that as well because it affects the microbiome in a healthy way. Absolutely, yeah. We um, have not done uh, a rigorous microbiome study on broccoli yet, but um, we, uh, yeah, but we will, so stay tuned. But you got but, it. Yeah, but um, yeah, I feel, feel certain that it, it does impact the, the microbiome. And, and there may already be a paper out there. And that's I, I'm sure if we look, that's another thing I love is there's so much research on it, on sulforaphane's already out there. Um, I'm just postulating in my head. I wonder, spore probiotics are real game changers in my world and they've been a real, the way they work, I really like the mechanism over some of the older probiotics. And I'm just curious, someday it'd be fun to combine those and see if there wouldn't be a synergistic effect um, because I'm assuming this would have, uh, often spores will help with the glyphosate as well. And I just, I don't know. This is just me purely thinking outside the box. Yeah. I bet that there's some synergy there with broccoli and spores. Yeah, uh, quite possibly. So you have given us some wonderful information. I'm so, like I said, so excited to share this. I did include, for those of you listening here, a link so you can get 27% uh, off if you want to check out the product. Um, is there any other, I know your website, broccoli.com, has tons of information. Um, anywhere else where people can go, is that the best place to find the research and the information? Yeah, that, that's a, uh, it has quite a bit on there. Uh, bro Brockelite.com uh, has a lot of information, so... Got yeah. it. And we've got a special code here. And again, when this is on YouTube, you will have the same code below. So if you guys want to check it out, get your own. You can always call my clinic too, because we'll be carrying it. But I want you to be able to have access wherever you're at. And I just believe in what you're doing, David. Thank you so much for sharing your journey, for sharing your research, and for just committing to um, this kind of level of science because it's people like you. And I'm so sorry of the struggle and the difficulty and the loss that you've been through. But I know your wife is smiling down because this is such a game changer. And I have such a heart for what you've been through because personally, my experience with breast cancer. So I really, really appreciate you coming on and sharing with us. It's been my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome.